Welcome to the Pothead Joe Pop Putty Man here, and welcome to my official spoiler free review of Black Widow. Now, um, I will be going into just, um, you know, how I feel about the movie, so on and so forth in the beginning. And then when we get into anything that may be spoiler, I will warn you, but don't worry, this is spoiler free, no worries. You can sit back and relax until you see the warning sign. So if you can, if you're new here, make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of when any of these reviews go out. Um, I will be doing a review for Loki, um, or the last episode of Loki, uh, coming this up uh, Wednesday. So make sure that you have those noties on so you can be notified of that review of that last episode. So the first thing we're going to go over is um, some of the, well, first and foremost, basically um, what this uh, movie feels like. And what I mean by that is um, when it comes to Black Widow, if you're expecting something like in the um, the super strength or the magical things of like, you know, Thor or Doctor Sh uh, Strange or things like Ant-Man, you're really not going to get that. Um, the comparison I saw online to this, and I haven't seen these movies, so... Don't sue me. But a lot of people are comparing this to like the Born Identity or Porn Supremacy type movies with a little bit of uh, superpowers mixed in with it. And, um, you know, if once you see the movie, you'll understand why I say that. Um, but as far as the movie, I feel like the flow of it is very nice. Definitely, uh, there's always the this, this stigma now that Marvel doesn't know how to make movies off females. I think Black Widow, they've gotten to the point where they're very comfortable with it, so they understand what they're doing when it comes to Black Widow and how important it is to get everything right when it comes to this character. Now, when it comes to the chemistry, I really like the chemistry of some of the characters, and I do like, uh, in particular, uh, Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. the Black Widow, you know, and then, of course, Yelena Belo Belova, which is the uh, other Black Widow. No, and that's another thing I need to explain. This isn't really going to spoilers, but this is just explaining that, remember, they, they call Black... Uh, they call the people in the Red Room Black Widows, the people that are trained. So now, um, Yelena Belova and Natasha Romanoff, aka Scarlett Johansson's character, and um, the other character that I'm speaking of, have a great chemistry in the movie. Uh, and, the, and the actress is Florence Pug. Uh, she actually did a great job with this character, and um, and it, I feel the chemistry, the relationship they have in the movie, is amazing. Now, I do want to also mention David Harbour from um, Stranger Things plays Alexia uh, Shatoska. I can never pronounce his name. Red Guardian, okay? That's how I know him. That's how a lot of us comic book fans know him. But Red Guardian, he, he played a great Red Guardian. I do feel he was a different type of Red Guardian than I'm used to, but I will say he did a great job of that. Um, as far as the, the roles, um, uh, the main characters felt really, really strong. Um, of course... I know I'm going to get a lot of people on how I feel about Taskmaster, and I will just state this. Um, as far as the, the, the character, I enjoyed what I saw. I would have liked maybe more, um, but I, I do like what I saw. Um, and um, But then, then I, you know, later down the road, um, things not really changed, but was a slight adjustment in any other way. Now, as far as like how good the movie is, the movie is a great movie, but if you're expecting the spectacle or the amazement of, um, of something like Doctor Strange, understand that's not what this movie is going to bring you. It's more of an action packed bonanza of just, um, like, like Jason Bourne trying to, trying to run from, from people, that kind of thing. Oh, and whether, whether or not who she, the, the person's running from, that will be left for you to see. But as far as the movie, I quite I did quite enjoy it. I wouldn't say it was a knockout of the park 10 out of 10. But I would say it's either between a 7 or 8. Now, I, I'm going to stick with the 7 only because of a few things for myself. And when, when it comes to reviews like this, you tend to have to be biased. So, for example, if you're not really, really, really a big fan of Marvel Comics... And this is your new forte to a lot of these characters. I think you're going to thoroughly enjoy it. And for you, it might be an 8 out of 10. For me, I feel like it's a 7 out of 10. Maybe kind of cusping at 6 out of 10. But not. I'll, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Because there was times I laughed. There was times I smiled. There was times that I just was like, yeah, kick ass kind of situation. So I was very, very um, enthralled in those situations that made me really enjoy it. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of situation at the theater I went to where um, they actually... 
the projector cut off right when the credits started, and everyone was upset because, you know, with every Marvel movie, you stay for the end credits to see if there's an end credit scene. And so um, we had to wait 15 minutes till they uh, had to go back and re-roll the credits, and we actually saw the la- last 10 minutes of the movie re- over again. Um, so I kind of used that as a time to look around and look for things, you know what I mean? So... Again, just to, to to be honest with you, for me, it's a 7 out of 10. I think for a regular viewer of MCU, you might think an 8 out of 10. If I was to go to my lower score and say 6 out of 10, then for you, be 7 out of 10. So if you kind of look at it that way, that's the way I put it. Um, and with that being said, I really, really enjoyed it, but, I, uh, but I, there's a lot of things I want to go over. So with that being said, this is the end of my spoiler-free review, Okay. Now I'm going into spoiler territory. So if you do want to see this movie, you need to stop right now. And please stop this video. Come back when you've seen the movie. Especially if you have any questions and go, I don't understand what happened here. I will try to explain it to you as best as I can with this spoiler part. So again, everything that was spoiler free, that was all spoiler free. We are now going to go into spoiler territory. So this is a good time to stop. Is everyone gone? Cool. So you've seen the movie and you probably have some questions. So here's the way we're going to do this. And let's bring up the steps right here. So first thing we're going to do is go over characters. I'm going to go into uh, how the characters were changed from the comic books. Um, uh, particularly, you, you might be asking me if you're not familiar with characters like Taskmaster. And then, of course, I said on there before, and you, since you're in the spoiler area, you understand this. Every single one of these women are called Black Widow. So when I go into the characters, I'm only going to the main characters of this movie. That means Red Guardian, um, Melina, Natasha, Yelena, um, uh, Dreykov, um, uh, and, of course, the um, end end credits, which one of the characters you saw would look very familiar, a.k.a. Hawkeye, which we'll get to that later. And then the other one is something that you had to have Disney Plus to see, which when we get to that, I will tell you guys spoiler for whatever a show that is on Disney Plus. So with that being said, I can't even talk. With that being said, let's go and get started with the characters right now. So for the first character, clearly we have to go over Black Widow. Now in the comic books, understand they call her Natal- N- Natalia Romanova, Romanova or... I can never pronounce her name. I, uh, the, when it comes to Russian names, I really do mess up. So I'm going to be honest with you. Aside from Natasha Romanoff, because I've heard it so much verbally said to me um, through the movies, that's the name I'm used to. But there are the different names in the comic book. So um, uh, keep in mind that Black Widow first appeared in Tales of Suspense number 52. This is another thing. I did I just recently did my local review, and that the whole Tales of Suspense is a big thing. Um, or, you know, uh, tells a mystery, tells a suspense. So a lot of these characters spawn from that. Um, now, keep in mind um, that um, um, she was a Russian spy antagonist, um, um, you know, with Iron Man, things of that nature. Um, and she wasn't costumed. She was actually a, a, a widow, just like it, it, the, in the comic book. And she ends up being shown as a Russian spy. Um, and, of course, later on down the road, they do uh, they do go into the Red Room story. Um, the Red Room story definitely was changed, and um, and it was a lot to fit in more characters, I guess you could say. Um, and I honestly was a little bit frustrated because of several things, and that's going to be um, uh, another character I'm going to go into. See, so understand, um, two of the characters that I um, actually wanted to go into what it, uh, was um, actually uh, 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 both uh, Yelena Belova and Taskmaster. Now, Yelena Belova, um, if you remember, um, she actually was, uh, uh, um, she's like a sister in this movie. Um, so, um, it's, it, it, they definitely changed a lot of her backstory when it came to that character. Now, keep in mind, in the comic books, she does appear, first appear in Inhumans number 5 back in 1999. Um, and she actually is a Black Widow as as well. You know what I mean? She cha- she actually changed a uh, little. Uh, she actually trained with Natasha Romanoff, um, which again was the first Black Widow. So I'm gonna get, get to her after um, I go through the rest of the characters, and then we'll come back to her and of course uh, Taskmaster. Taskmaster, I want to go into a lot of detail, so we'll get into that a little bit later. So as far as Melina Yostovic, uh, I cannot pronounce her name. We call her Melina. Um, she actually first appeared in Marvel Fanfare number 11 back in 1983. 
Um, but she does end up becoming a character by the name of Iron Maiden that wears a mask. Um, and that actually turns out to be bad guy because she actually has a jealousy because of Black Widow, Natasha's character. So they definitely changed her to be something more of a nice character. Unless, of course, you see in the movie, so you know that she's still alive. So she has the potential to become Iron Maiden. Um, so I don't know. I mean, honestly, I like the way they did her character. But again, I was waiting based on the trailers. I was waiting for some kind of jealousy to come in. Like maybe she didn't become a Black Widow when actually she's like an older Black Widow, if you really think about it. So it's 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 an odd situation when she's not really called Black Widow, um, but she was trained under the same situation. Um, and she even talks about that well in this movie. So um, I liked the, the casting of it, but I do feel that was something they sh uh, changed a lot. And I don't know, maybe she does end up getting a jealousy later on because she be, she's the Black Widow that becomes in Avengers. But that also goes back to um, to uh, y Yelena Belova's character because I have a, thing, a theory about her, but we'll get to that later. And now there's Alexia uh, Shostakov, I cannot pronounce his name, which is Red Guardian. And here's two things that make things awkward about this. One, I love this character. I love the way um, that um, uh, um, uh, uh, the David uh, uh, Harbour played the character. But here's where the odd thing comes in. You see, in the comic books, um, Red Guardian, uh, a.k.a. Alexa, is married to Natasha, or Natalia, that put the character that Black Widow. He's married to Black Widow in the comic books. Honestly, it's a weird, weird subject to see that he plays more of a father figure in this movie. So I don't know how to... What's the word I'm looking for? How to... Um, feel about it because when you're expecting something and it doesn't go because I kind of already knew this based on the way the trailers were like where he was old he looks older but I, I, I again I think he did a great job as Red Guardian you know what I mean um and he is a counterpart of, of to Captain America as you know the Russian version of Captain America so he did a really good job I do love the part I definitely felt like there were a lot of things that were changed but honestly yeah, yeah, I actually think they did it for a good reason. So, with that being said, Red Guardian was pretty freaking amazing. Next, we have Rick Mason. Now, if you don't know which one Rick Mason is, it actually took me a second because I had to, uh, when the credits came up, I had to look for his name. Mason is actually the one that was supplying the stuff for for Black Widow, aka uh, Natasha. And in the comic books, he just plays like an agent. So, they literally changed Mason into a not an agent anymore he's more of a um what he's a he's a a, um, a a dealer to help like heroes i mean i don't know how to explain it but basically yeah that's what mason is then there's thunderbolt ross aka thaddeus ross aka the guy that chases down the hulk all the time right he first appeared in the incredible hulk number one and he actually was one of those characters that really didn't play much of a role, as you saw yourself in this movie. He, um, of course, he does a good job of the character. He end, actually, in the comic book, he actually end, ends up being Red Hulk. So that's kind of a little funny story. But the actor that's playing him is getting old. So I don't really foresee that happening. Now we get to Taskmaster and Yelena Belova. Now, let me go into Yelena Belova since Taskmaster was probably the one character I was excited about. But honestly, kind of let down. So, with Yelena. Yelena was the one I was super happy about. In the comic book, she does take on the, mon the, the moniker of Black Widow away from uh, Natasha. So, uh, there is manipulation that happens within the comic book between both uh, Yelena and Natasha. And I kind of feel like that's what they did in here. You know what I mean? So, um, and again, she, uh, Yelena has become incorporated with um with uh um shield before as well but now that brings us to what might be the end credits i believe yelena is going to be the next black widow and hear me out you saw what happened at the end credits and i will come back to this when i go to easter eggs because there's a lot to explain when it comes to end credits but i want to make sure i get the, the the characters out of the way so with the end credits 
the major things I wanted to point out was one, um, uh, or not with the end credits, but with Elena Belova. The one, the big thing I wanted to point out is that I think, and this is my theory, I think now that they killed off. Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow and the actress that plays Yelena Belova, um, let me get her name again, um, Florence Pug. Am I saying it right? P U G H? Florence Pug? Pug? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I feel like I'm slaughtering the name. Anyway, I feel like she's going to take on the role of Black Widow and become a Avenger. And it's funny to think about because in the comic book, Natasha is actually the one that helps uh, helps out um, Clint, a.k.a. Uh, uh, Hawkeye. But in the movies, Hawkeye helps Black Widow. So it's kind of funny how that's all reversed. But now I think what's going to happen is, because in the comic books, um, Black Widow is actually going after Hawkeye. But then, uh, um, but then um, it, it switches on them in the movies, and I think that's kind of what's going to happen with uh, with uh, um, um, with with uh, Yelena's character is that Yelena is going to be the new Black Widow, and so that's going to lead into what happens at the end, and we will go into that when it comes to the Easter egg part. But I got one more character, and that's that's freaking Taskmaster. Oh, Taskmaster. Okay. I have a lot to unravel with this because it's not like this is it. There is possibilities of changes, but I'm not happy only because I feel like the path they're going with this is not the path I want. You see, I was really, really excited to see Taskmaster. For those who are not aware, Taskmaster has the ability to, uh, has photographic reflexes. So he can basically duplicate and predict other people's moves. So if you saw the, the part where both Black Widow and him flipped, they even said it. Basically, he can uh, duplicate moves. And when I started watching this movie, uh, I was kind of kind of frustrated because I'm going to get into Drakeoff and everything uh, in the Easter eggs because I feel like there's not really too much to talk about unless I as I go through the Easter eggs, it might feel like I do. But here's the thing. In the comic books, uh, there's the, the, the character of Taskmaster plays by a male character by the name of Tony Masters. And he runs an academy that, that basically trains, it's called, it's called the Taskmaster Academy, that basically trains, hen, trains henchmen for supervillains. And so when I heard he was being involved, but then he, they, 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 they sneakily say in the trailers, he runs the Red Room. I was thinking that maybe the Red Room would be his Taskmaster Academy. And it kind of was, if you think about it, because all the Black Widows end up being put all over the world and trained as basically supervillains, but on their own. They're not really supervillains working for other bad guys. But then, listen, when it comes to the whole Dracoff and Antonia, Antonia... Um, is Dreykov's daughter in the movie, and, and we know now that she's Taskmaster. And she ends up getting the brainwashing out of her. Now, Dreykov, I remember um, Loki saying something to Black Widow in the first Avengers movie about being Dreykov's, uh, Dreykov's daughter. But that kind of is not what's said here, unless they're trying to make a joke on him raising her in the Red Room, you know what I mean? And again, I actually don't know if he's been in the comic books, so definitely tell me in the comments. But then Antonia, the only Antonia that I know is Antonia Jensen, which isn't Antonia, or it's either Antonia Jensen or Antonia Stark. I remember Antonia Jensen had a, like a like an Iron Man armor with the Defenders. And if you don't remember, Defenders was the series that was on Netflix that they ended up making a short series with Daredevil, uh, um, 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 uh. Anyway, my point to the whole thing is what even trying to sidetrack in, in these situations is in the comic books, um, um, Taskmaster is a, a guy. And I, I, I know, oh, well, why are you hating on women? It's not a matter of hating on women. There's a past with this character that's huge in my eyes, and that's Deadpool. Deadpool is here. You see, remember when I said that he had photographic reflexes that can duplicate any person's fighting style? That's because he's able to understand, he, he knows every type of fighting style and can duplicate it. Then there comes Deadpool, right? 
And Deadpool is one of those characters that's um, unpredictable in nature because of his mind being all messed up and everything. You know what I mean? So he could never, ever, ever, ever defeat him. And he's had combat with him numerous times where he just can't win. And it's so funny to see them uh, react to each other, especially when he gets mad when he cannot just predict um, his moves. And keep in mind... Um, Taskmaster literally had control of his own academy that was called the Solomon Institute of the Criminally Insane. And he's gone against uh, the Avengers. Like, he literally learned the characters of uh, in his first fight, learned all the Avengers, except there was a new Avenger. I can't remember what the name of the Avenger was that actually he didn't know about, and it was a new one. And because they, he didn't know the, the, the person's fighting style, he couldn't do anything. Um, and there was also things where involved with Daredevil, Punisher... This kind of goes for a circle on that whole situation. But then now at the end of this movie, we now have Taskmaster, no longer Taskmaster, unless they're going to make him a good girl. I can say good guy, it's still a good guy, but either way, I'm Taskmaster has such a past with so many characters that to throw him with a one off of Black Widow, yeah, he does definitely have a past with Black Widow, but to throw him off and just be like, okay, here's this one time. I want to have that chemistry he has like with Deadpool. I want to have that unpredictable nature where he's trying to fight him and uh, Deadpool is just like pulling off dances like the Macarena or something like that. And he just can't even figure him out. And unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get that. Um, and that makes me sad. So yeah. What do I have to say about it? There's really nothing I can. I liked Taskmaster before Taskmaster got revealed, but making Taskmaster a tragedy is okay if you're not familiar with him. If you're a big fan of Taskmaster like myself, or not even a big fan, a remote fan because I'm a big fan of Deadpool, so let's look at it that way. Anything, honestly, that's that's with Deadpool, I kind of follow and love. And with Taskmaster's past with Deadpool... I was looking so much into something happening, like, you know, at the end, I was hoping, and this was the dream, but I was hoping he would say something like, um, uh, hey, I'm going after a Merc with a mar mouth or something like that, you know what I mean? Giving a little Easter egg, but no, it didn't happen. But anyway, so yeah, when it comes to Taskmaster, actually, I know I might get a lot of slander for this, which by the way, Taskmaster first event appeared in Avengers 195. Anyway, <laughs> back in 1980, the year I was born too. But anyway, um, but yeah, so I'm a little bit frustrated with it. But when the mask was not revealed and that whole um, tragic story, backstory was not shown, Taskmaster was a badass. And I'm happy for that part. So we got the Taskmaster we wanted without the mask, the mystery, which in the comic books, he was still a mystery as well. His name, we did find out later that Taskmaster in the comic books is part of S.H.I.E.L.D. or was part of S.H.I.E.L.D. and was by, went by the name of Tony Masters. So... We did get a name reveal, and I know his, his story's been altered. I haven't read all his stories have been altered, but that's pretty much what I know. And like I said, they definitely changed it here. Now that we got all the um, all the uh, characters out of the way, let's go for some nice little Easter eggs in the movie. So the first one is going to be the vehicles that you see um, being chased down by um, by Black Widow at the end. If you look closely, you'll notice they actually have the Shield logo on them so this is kind of a hint to it wasn't really i don't think ross there getting her it was a total different thing or different setup um and that's why she ended up getting away which also then calls back to the vest you see her wearing with the blonde hair and when mason gives her that vehicle at the end of the jet that's because if you aren't aware which i should have put this in my spoiler free review that this movie takes place between um the end of civil war and the beginning of Infinity War. So all that happened in between Civil War and Infinity War, while all that was happening, that's when Black Widow's story was happening. So the jeans go on, because that's the reason why if you look, she has the blonde hair in the vest. The vest is the one that Yolanda gave her. And all, with all the pockets that she talked about, it's not big about the pockets. That's why Black Widow now looks like that. So I kind of like how they kind of put that in there as an homage to her character. Next, we have the reference of, uh, well, what ended up happening at the end of the movie when um, Black Widow, or K, a.k.a. Natasha Romanoff, um, is talking to Drakoff, and Drakoff is expelling his plans. 
This is a callback to what she was doing earlier. If you remember, she was actually watching a 007 movie in the trailer, which is called Moonraker. And if you are familiar, when it comes to 007 movies, James Bond could always get the, the villain to spit out all his plans. And so that way, of course, 007 can sabotage his plans, which is exactly what Natasha does at the end. She gets him talking so she can reveal his plans so she can destroy the plans, which is just a nice little callback. But that also calls back to the pets as well. If you remember, Melina actually calls her pet pig Alexi or to Alexa, which is Red Guardian. So we end up seeing that later. If you remember, the name was Fanny Longbottom that um, Black Widow uh, was co or called when she was trying to change her name and change her identity. And then, of course, the dog at the end credits that uh, Yolanda has, she calls Fanny. So that's two animals named after characters in the movie. And it's just funny that she calls her Fanny. But I don't remember Black Widow, aka okay, Natasha, telling her that she was called Fanny. That's still funny. And now for the two Easter eggs, probably my two favorite Easter eggs of all in this movie. Um, the first one is when Yolanda and is talking with Red Guardian and ends up calling him Crimson Dynamo. Now, if you're not familiar with who, who Crimson Dynamo is, Crimson Dynamo is actually a villain, but is a Russian villain. And can you take a while to guess what his ability is? Well, let's just say this. He has a suit of armor. Yes. Crimson Dynamo is the Russian version of Iron Man, as much as Red Guardian is the Russian version of Captain America. So for him to be called Crimson Dynamo, a.k.a. the evil Russian version of Iron Man, makes it pretty ironic, especially since Captain America and Iron Man for the longest time didn't get along with each other. Well, of course, they ended up, you know, patching things up, but you get what I'm saying. You see why it's funny. And now we get to the end credits. And I have a lot I want to explain and what might be happening. Um, so let me explain. First off, the character you saw by play by L Julie Lerdrapis, you remember the um, uh, Yolanda is now at the gravestone of, of Natasha. And then you see v Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. And if you remember, she appears in Falcon and the Winter Soldier recruiting recruiting the new Captain America, John Walker version, U.S. agent. And if you remember, she recruited him, okay? Now we have Yolanda that's recruited, which ended up potentially either she ended up being Black Widow or something else for her to hunt down Clint, a.k.a. Hawkeye. Which means Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, I love saying that name out loud, by the way, is recruiting people, all right? Now here's my question. Allegra de, uh, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, she becomes part of Hydra, but then in the comic books, there is a point where the John Walker U.S. agent, a.k.a. the former Captain America version, where he becomes U.S. agent, basically, makes a team called, uh, becomes a field leader of a team called the Jury. And they end up meeting with um, um, the Thunderbolts, which, of course, if you know, um, a Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross is part of that. And then but Hawkeye is the new leader of that, and they're now going after Hawkeye. So I feel like they're combining a lot of things that could be happening to where they might be bringing the jury in or the Thunderbolts. I honestly think this is going to be part of the Thunderbolts. I think this is all summing up, and we're going to have the new Black Widow. Because uh, the thing is, is now that we have um, um, uh, 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 now that we have Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. In um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, what you might not realize is there's a new Disney Plus series that's coming out soon. And do you know what it is? Hawkeye. And what is Yolanda looking after or looking for? Hawkeye. And who has um, Allegra, uh, <laughs> Valentina Allegra de Fontaine hired as um, uh, another person in her team? U.S. agent. Do you see the Disney Plus series starting to meld into the, the shows? And you see why they had to push back Black Widow? It's because they had to um, bring her in. But I think what was going to happen is I think Allegra, uh, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine was going to be, I'm just going to call her Valentina. I think Valentina was supposed to be um, revealed in this movie at the end. And then... She ends up being in a Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but then they reversed it, which it still works. If you watch it, it still works. 
So that's why you're wondering why who is that person played by Julia Louis Dreyfus from Seinfeld at the end? Is that would be solved if you watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier all the way through. And why is she going after um Clint? Is because she doesn't know that was the relationship. But I actually I thought she did mention Clint. Now I think about I thought she did. Maybe she mentioned Clint to somebody else, I think. But my point to the whole thing is is this is going to be full circle again. And it was a major Easter egg if you're a huge MCU fan and you've been following this whole time. But there you have it, guys. That is my official review and Easter eggs for Black Widow. I thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. The next movie we're doing is um, Shang Chi and the 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 the, the and the, uh, the the Ten Rings. Uh, the, the movie that's going to be um, I couldn't even say Ten Rings. I'm having trouble today. Um, um, that'll be the next one. That'll be in August, I think. Yeah, August. That movie comes out. We still have also um, Space Jam, Snake Eyes. Uh, the Free Guy, um, Suicide Squad, and Low Key, the last episode of Low Key, the What If series. Uh, basically, hit the subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed to finally be able to go to the movies. But I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I am Putty Man with Gamer Potheads. And do not forget, we're all about the score. Peace out. I'll see you in my next review. Bye.